Um, I'm in a privileged position, I think, probably compared to younger officers, certainly if they're in the position I was when I was their age, in that I've been able to accrue some savings. However, we have recently started to dip into those savings. Um, funds that were set up for university for my children, um, I've had to use those recently to, to pay some bills, um, which was something I really didn't want to do. Yeah, it's had a, a big impact on my well-being. Um, I'd say the plans I'd made for the, the future for my children, um, we're going to have to amend those. We're hoping that when in a few years' time, when they get to university age, that things will have improved. But it's been a long time now since we've had you know, any sort of improvement at all. So I'm, I'm not confident. You know, I feel really undervalued by the government. It's, um, as I say, I was promised a pension that I'm now not going to get. Uh, we were promised pay rises that we haven't received for a long, long time. Um, since I started, I've also had incremental pay rise freezes. So I was told it would take 10 years to go into full pay and it took nearly 12. Um, it just seems every element of our pay and conditions has been gradually eroded by the government and I hate to say it just makes you feel massively undervalued. It's um, morale, my morale has been low for quite a long time. Uh, again, much like my colleagues, I, I don't, I've stopped expecting anything, any sort of reward uh, for what we do. Um, it's a bit of a sad sort of state of affairs when you think about it, when you, <laughs> you sort of actually say it out loud. But, you know, that's, you know, I, I come into work now, I do my job and I go home at the end of the day. Um, it was a big part of my move into the neighbourhood team is that, like, like we discussed, the risks and rewards, they don't balance out when you're out on the front line and going to 999 jobs without adequate backup.